come into this with me. I want to show you something. Isn't this magic? Open up your social media, scroll through your feed. Isn't it fascinating what we can do all with a device that fits in the palm of our hands? Remember, although you may think you are looking at magic, you are also looking at a living, breathing artifact of your experiences and sharing it with the world. My grandpa taught me magic at a young age. He also gave me his own personal quizzes and spelling tests in the morning before the bus came. I didn't like it then, but looking back, it gave me this spark to think differently. It's probably why I fell in love with the connections between anthropology, art, and education. While investigating this love triangle of mine further and further, there is one thing that I discovered that I could say for certain. The study of culture, art, the cause and effect of our actions every day, even magic, all comes down to one very single skill, and that is observation. It is a skill vital to my role as an ever-learning educator, slash artist, slash pseudo-poet, slash sometimes magician, when I do that one card trick I still remember. I guess going from art school to what we call the real life, I've slowly noticed that not everyone has this magical gift of awareness that practicing artists do. Even though all along the arts have literally always been ingrained in every single one of us. The late philosopher of art, Dennis Dutton, says this is because of evolution. We have an art instinct because of evolution. Yet, for some reason, we have lost touch with paying attention to ourselves as visual people. We have lost the ability to explicitly teach art as a communication tool in schools. So what is the truth? We are diving deeper and deeper into a culture led by misinformation, social media, and technology. How can we expect our students to be ready to navigate life outside of school if they aren't given the tools to be visually literate, if they aren't given the chance to develop that art instinct? Because right now, we don't use the arts correctly. We assume our students can read, create, and post on social media, yet if we help them think like an artist with an art instinct, we can use the arts correctly. If we help make reflection a reflex, then we can use the arts correctly. I want schools to begin asking me, how can I help my students develop an art instinct? How can I help them become better navigators of the internet? How can I help my students exercise their observational skills further? And my answer is, it's time to use the arts correctly and transition this art instinct into helping students develop an artist mindset, not only in the art classroom, but also outside of it. And here's my secret. You don't necessarily have to be an artist in order to think like one. When you can think like one, you are equipped with a certain skill set that helps you engage with the world differently. You can notice the nuances that make visuals so valuable and yet so dangerous at the same time, and you can do it instantly. So why can't these two images be the same? And I don't mean let's pack up our classes and students and take them to galleries and museums. But let's shift student learners to becoming more productive and compassionate citizens by looking at artwork daily. Look at it in every subject area. Connect images to every part of life. Let students see art as a gateway to new perspectives. Let them and help them practice slowing down for once. And I think you'll see them engage with the world differently. Use it to help students engage with visual language. 
discuss story, dissect symbols, and show them. Show them how artwork is shaped by context. And then it will become a reflex. Because when we connect art with context, we get dialogue. With dialogue, we foster emotional intelligence. With emotional intelligence, we get better equipped 21st century students. Speaking of which, my sixth graders tell me all the time that every time I want them to remember something, I keep repeating it. I guess it's a habit that I've developed over time. <laughs> so they tell me that every time I want them to know something, I keep repeating it. I used to tell them that my twin sister and I didn't get cell phones until college, uh, high school. Um, and then when my dad finally caved and allowed us to text, it took five whole minutes just to type out and send the word hi. Hi class, I would usually start when I was teaching photography. Who has a camera phone today? And they would always reply and make fun of me. Um, aren't all phones camera phones, Ms. Donro? I don't understand the difference. Little did they know they weren't. We also had flip phones, and they weren't always connected to the internet either. According to Common Sense Media, students, 95% of students, have a cell phone by the time they reach the 13 to 18 years old age bracket. Students, toddlers to eight years old, spend an average of 48 minutes a day on their devices when it was only five minutes in 2011. Tweens, like my sixth graders, spend six hours a day on their devices, and teens, nine. Most of the time, they're on apps like TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram. All social media applications that are saturated with visuals and motivated by likes. If the Toledo Museum of Art reports that we only spend 17 seconds looking at art in a museum, then how long do we really spend looking at images on our phone? Probably half that. Before Snapchat's latest updates, it was only 10 seconds. We have let the showmanship of this magic take over. Social media has caused or has trained our brains to only see and not look and critically observe what's in front of us. This is my call for educators, family members, and people who know they think at, they look at their phone way too much, put it down and observe something with intention. Be present. You deserve to be present. They deserve to be present. We deserve to be present together. And while we're at it, schools, colleges, administrators, anyone still stuck in this idea that art has to be technical and void of true meaning, do me a favor and throw out art for art's sake. It is the biggest lie people in our field have been perpetuating forever. No artist creates just to create, period. Our students deserve better. Our students deserve to engage with the world around them visually through different thinking and routines for when we can show them that there is meaning, there is purpose, there is story, and there is also technique behind the visuals they see, and we present them in schools and around them on social media, we can help them create connections, use an artist's mindset, and strengthen that reflex of observation and critical thinking that is so necessary right now. And this is how we're going to do it. I have three visuals today that I want to show you and see how when we connect context with the visuals, by looking at it, our perception changes. We go from passive lookers to reflective practitioners by using a thinking routine developed by Harvard's Project Zero called See, Think, Wonder. For when we give students the experience of accumulating knowledge and perspective through image routines like this, we help them build a database to recall on. 
For when we do give them these experiences of accumulating knowledge and perspectives through image routines like this, we help them build a database to recall on. Our first image is one we all know by heart, Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night. Um, today for you, I have a recreation done by my awesome colleague, Lisa Gramarosa, and a group of her students. When starting this routine, I would ask students, what do you see? Most would say I see a beautiful swirling sky and a tree. I would then ask them, what do you think or what do you notice about what you see? Often they would say, I think it's at night. I think there's stars and I see the sun or the moon in the sky. And I think that's a tree, Ms. Donro. I don't really know if that's a tree, but I guess I'll just trust you that it's a tree. And then I would ask them, well, what do you now wonder? Students would often tell me, I wonder if this is a real place. If it is a real place, where is it? They would also wonder why Vincent van Gogh chose to paint in this style. And I would say these are all adequate observations and inferences. But what would happen if we then told students the context of the painting? Little know that Vincent van Gogh actually painted this from his hospital room. Knowing that, when you look at the image, when you look at the painting, what visual clues can tell you that? Now, this is when the light bulbs start to go off in students' minds. So I would often have students say, well, OK, so it looks like there's a city in the distance. And it looks like it's far away, and it's small, and it's untouchable. It also looks like we're looking down as if we were in a tall building. Knowing that, discussing that, and dialoguing with the image, students now know Vincent van Gogh's why. The artwork turns from a, something pretty to look at to a living, breathing artifact of his experiences. Now look at this cat. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? I think we can all agree we see a cat. And think she, her name is actually Frankie. She looks a little strange. And wonder why her ears are kind of big and her legs are a little twisted. Um, using images like this, and I'll be the first one to tell you this is a practical joke I played on, my, played on my brother when I was babysitting Frankie. I used a little bit of Photoshop magic, a skill that we can start teaching students much sooner in schools than high school. Granted, my brother's reaction wasn't that good. As you can see, she's the tiniest cat I've ever met. But knowing this, students can start to see how images can be manipulated. When dialoguing with manipulated images, they start to learn the skills behind it. Now what do you say? What do you think? What do you notice? I've done this thinking routine, this visual thinking routine, with a group of students before. And they told me that they see a basketball shoe. And then they told me that they think it looks worn and used. They then wondered why there was only one shoe in the pair and not both. I then told students the context, and the room went silent. This image is part of a, for a digital archive called Museum of the Incomplete, started by the parents of Joaquin Oliver, Manny, and Patricia. Joaquin Oliver lost his life in the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. I remember asking students, knowing that, how does your perception change? And I still get goosebumps thinking about it, because I remember a student telling me, this Don wrote, his life was probably basketball, and now it's incomplete. That's why there's only one image, uh, one shoe, and not the pair. I changed students' perspectives because I gave them the context. I let a story unfold, and I watched students connect the dots. They saw images connected to meaning. They saw visuals carry so much more weight than they are usually afforded with context. They were able to reflect. 
Observing closely makes a difference. Context makes a difference. Reflecting makes a difference. Next time you have an image presented to you, question it. Flex that reflection muscle so hard that your critical thinking dazzles people around you. Now, intentional or not, artists for generations have been leaving behind living, breathing artifacts of their experiences long after they have passed. Right now, with proper training, we can help people curate theirs constructively and in the present. We can help them be better at being present. And I want you to remember, artists, designers, and those with an artist mindset are the ones hired to infiltrate what your students see on social media. They know how to use and apply visual language aesthetically and purposely to make you see, think, and act, not to wonder and question before you do so. If we start this process now, as an artist, I am telling you this, you can beat us at our own game. We all have that instinct and capacity to build an artist mindset. We can still live with the magic of technology and learn the tricks behind it. Like my grandpa taught me to think differently with simple routines, we can do the same. We all have that instinct and capacity to build an artist mindset. We all have that instinct and capacity to build an artist mindset. Thank you.